in the morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sunday School on the Go. We started out with Song Healer by Richard Smallwood. Don't try to fight the battle yourself. Stand still. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're listening to Healer by Richard Smallwood today. Yeah, we're going to have a tough lesson today, so uh, it's going to be a little bit different. Let me go see if I can get some more light. I'll be right back. You just talking to me. <laughs> I like that. Leave that light like it is. I need the one in my All right. You on um, recording, please. Oh, yes. Yes. Please. Where's Shanana here? Shanana. She's, She's not, not here yet. She Denise needs to wait from the computer. She can't even let her in if she is sitting and waiting. Oh, Denise has to let her in. But no, I too. Blackness? Y'all hear that song? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is that bright enough? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me check and make sure nobody in the. Trying to get in. Put your wine bottle down. Hey, you are being recorded. Okay. Right there. This right here. <laughs> Come on, we need the bomb, Lord. We need the bomb. We got the bomb. Woo, Lord. I don't see anybody else. So, you saw who Queen. I said, I'm about to send him a message. I said, Kate, they could be sitting there. I said, and Denise, I haven't seen them yet because she was waiting. So you guys must be going to church. Yeah, I'm going to church. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Today's Amber's birthday. I'm sure you got it on your calendar, maybe. I wish that, I think I sent it out yesterday, but I will uh, call them, text them. Yes, yes. We are going to turn it off. We're going to get started. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a tough lesson today. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to have the evangelist to pray a scene, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with today. Thank you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for bringing us through all last night while we tossed and turned. Father, you brought us into a new day. Father, we get our life to you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for the ones that are here, and we pray for the ones that's coming soon, and the ones that can't come for whatever reason. We ask your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I see one more. Let me let them in. Blackness? Not yet. 
black ones. I don't see the black. No, no. Okay, so you guys, this is going to be a tough lesson. And the reason why it is a little bit off, it's what God gave me to talk about today. So uh, we got some scriptures. We're going to do what we normally do as far as uh, talking about the day and prophecy. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. So if you do not have a pen. You can always go back and listen to the lesson later on, but you, you really probably going to want to write these things down. So our topic today, well, let me, before I give you the topic, let me get, let me do my, my two, the three, six, 22, and give you the prophecy for today. So three is the number of spiritual perfection by the son and the Holy Spirit. Number six is the number of man. You hear often 666 uh, is the mark of the beast. It is the number of man or humanity. And then, of course, this entire year is a year of fruitfulness. And so the prophecy that the Lord gave me today, uh, it said, God is calling us into a time of healing. Many times before a healing can take place, we have to rip the bandages off. Let me let the blackness in. Two black control. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So let me start over. Let me read this. God is calling us into a time of healing. Many times before healing can take place, bandages have to be ripped off of our heart. We have to be able to be vulnerable in order to heal. This week, we will start the process of healing. This, this is a safe place for us to be honest about everything that we are dealing with. I believe the reason our group is the size it is is so that we can be free and therefore we can free others. This is the year of fruitfulness both for phys- both physically and spiritually. We will begin to see the differences this year holds compared to last year. So, the topic. Grief and repair. Grief and repair. Yeah, I said that too. I said, really? (laughs) You serious, Lord? Because I was going to do my normal do and go get the Sunday school lessons for the whole year and no he gave us 60, 26 topics that we're going to be talking about during the Sunday lesson so I broke down grief into as an acronym so grief the first grief the first G is gone uh, the second G is relief I mean not G y'all see where I'm going right yeah. The next one is relief, and I is immediate, E is early, and F is feeling. So we know what gone is. It means to be departed or lost or whatever. Consumed, whether it's our loved ones who are no longer physically with us, like our, our mom, our dad, our son, grandparents, cousins, uncles, aunts friends or co-workers, anybody that we have lost that are gone, that are no longer with us. So I'm going to give y'all three scriptures I want y'all to grab. I'm going to have Vanessa to grab James 4 and 14. Uh, Brother Gary, I want you to uh, grab Genesis 5. We're going to read 21 through 22. Shanana, I'm going to have you read Second Kings two and nine, and the blackness left. What happened? He may have had problems or something. So he, hopefully, he's trying to get back in. <laughs> oh, what happened? I said the topic, and he said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, not today." <laughs> no, I mean, I think it happened right away when he got in. Oh, okay. Second Kings two and twenty two. Twenty nine. Uh, Second Kings okay. two and nine. Okay. So we're going to go in order. So I'm going to have Gary read first. Shanana, you're going to read? 
Yeah, but you your verse is like okay. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna go in the Bible order. We are gonna go in the Bible okay. order. I'm reading uh, from the King James. Okay. And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Okay, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That's it. That's it, yeah, stop there. Shanana 2, 2 Kings 2 and 9. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Alicia, Alicia, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Alicia said, I pray thee that a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Amen. So it, I guess I gave you the wrong, well, it, it, it'll it work for now. Uh, there's, okay. more, there's more verses that go with that. So I'm going to summarize that when we get there. Go ahead, Vanessa. Uh, this is the NIV version. Okay. Why? Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. We have often heard about that our lives is some of the beginning date and the end date and then what we did in between the dashes. So in this case, I wanted us to think about gone in another life. You know, we know that Enoch and Elijah were were taken from taken without what they consider to be natural death, and so I wanted to remind us that just because a person is gone from our life right now does not mean that they're gone from us. They are gone uh, physically, and we know this by the things that we see around us. Uh, we constantly think of little things. Let me let the blackness in. Uh, we constantly <laughs> think of different things. And, and I'm not saying that it's easy for them to be gone from us because as the things that have been going on lately in my life, I have been really struggling. I'm, I'm just being honest. I have been really struggling with God's choice, you know, because he's the ultimate one, right? He's the one that that uh, chooses uh, to uh, I hate this thing right here. They say plucking flowers out of the garden. I don't like that at all. But, you know, that he is the one that chooses to do so. And so we have to line up with what God has allowed. And so the spiritual definition that God gave me for gone was physically absent, but spiritually translated to heaven or to hell. And sometimes that's the part that we get we have a problem with it. But it's not our choice. It has nothing to do with us. And once it has been gone, uh, we can't change it. There's nothing that we can do without it. And so uh, since we deal with that on a regular basis, I said we have we may think that we know where the person went, but remember God is the ultimate to know he's the one that makes that choice and decision. So my question to you today since we're talking about God, and our subject, one more time, is grief and repair. So my question to you is, what is holding you back from healing? Anybody? Nothing. Nothing's holding me back. One more. Healing. Oh, my, two, healing. <laughs> okay, now I'm confused. Now I misunderstood okay what's holding me back from healing uh i i feel like um and i i've only had this well i may have had this discussion with my brother too but discussion where um sometimes i feel numb that i'm still feeling numb and sometimes i don't even know I question whether I have a heart anymore. Um, I think, um, and I know it, it, it's 
even though I was having some struggles before mama passed and everything, um, that's after that happened, that's when I started to question those things because um, I, I still feel that, I still feel like I'm in that state. I don't know how, how to describe. So what's helping, keeping me from healing is um, maybe really releasing everything to let 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 my let myself go let myself be let it let everything maybe I'll even just say let every guard be down and just be released to let it happen naturally I guess awesome that's anyway great. that's me that's all I can say that's great what about you uh brother Benoit did you kind of get the gist of what we're talking about today did you have any comment or um, you want me to what? come back? You want me to come back to you? I don't believe that I haven't healed. I believe I have. I mean, I um, I have a different concept of uh, how and why we go. Um, you know, and I don't think that uh, it's all about uh, God taking somebody. I don't. I just don't believe that's the case. So. Uh, I know and understand that we live in a world that is that lies under the sway of the enemy, you know, and his job is to uh, not up in you, you know, most definitely take you out, you know, especially if you're trying to do what God would have you to do. So, I mean, there's just a lot of, so I, I just don't think that I have it at this point um, healed, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, if you love somebody, they're supposed to be missed. That's just what it is as far as the process, uh, you know. And there's a, I mean, there's a real live hope, you know. There is a real live hope. So, I mean, just, it just doesn't end here. Right. That uh, there's no finality for me in that so you know if that makes sense so yep. uh, yeah i'll miss conversating with you for the moment but i mean we all gotta go we're all going at some point amen you know, so i have a different concept about the whole thing so uh especially especially after mama's passing it's just uh uh what's the uh uh Locked up. There was a piece of that. Uh, the Lord helped me to get past that. You know, I mean, that was a prayer of mine. And uh, once I got past the fear of that, I mean, the, you get past the fear of some things, it just takes, like you say, the sting of death, it just takes the sting out of it. Uh, not that you don't want to be missed, but it just takes the sting out of it. Because, like I said, if now, if this, if, the, if there was a finality with, you know, if I pass today, if that was just it, that's different. Yeah. But that, this is a process. portion of it. So, and I just look at it that, you know, I mean, in order to get to college, you got to get to high school. You know, so you got to do the process of getting to high school. Once you leave high school, you know, there are some, uh, I'm going to, Students. You know, I mean, that just comes with it in order to move to the And you're breaking up too, so I kind of want to give you a heads up. You're breaking up too, so we're we're like uh 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 trying to catch up with Filling you. The blanks. To, Filling in read, the blanks. read between the lines here. So I just <laughs> Thank you. I just want to. I mean, we got the gist of what you were saying, but you know, we just yeah. Want to let you know, if you want to say something. More significant than what you said thus far, right, we're gonna have to work that out. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think uh, he's I mean, yeah. yeah, well, I, I put it off of uh, my fire. Okay, all right. But yeah, I mean, I don't know what you heard, but yeah, that, I believe that's it's possible. Uh, uh, yes, I, mean, I, I don't believe in a lot of regret, but. I feel like I'm and stuff, you know, but 
you can't, there's no root redo. You can't redo none of that. So there's no <laughs> reason. You know? Amen. Amen. So, okay, so we're going to uh, let the Lord continue as we go uh, forward. Some of the things I had written down, you're going to miss them. Sometimes you feel like a little regret. Uh, there's a whole yeah, yeah. time in your in here and where you can't feel and you feel like you can't feel. <clears throat> but the main ultimate thing is God wants us to be healed so that we can heal others. He wants us to go forward and if that's what's going on. Amen to that. He wants us to be we have to be the catalyst for others. And I believe, like I said, this small group is the reason why it's small the way it is, is because God wants to do something in us so that we can be a catalyst and help others uh, to maintain or to be able to speak to them. And uh, I am also in a similar place where uh, Vanessa is, you know, to a, you know, it's like, I, I'm healed on parts of it. And then it's like, as soon as I was released, releasing mom, then, you know, Malcolm died. So it was like, oh, are you serious? You know, and, and so God told me, he said that I want you to talk about that today. I want you to talk about grief. And I want, I want to talk to them and let them know it's okay to be wherever you are in the process. As long as you don't stay there. Mm-hmm. It's okay for me to feel some kind of way right now. But as long as I don't stay there and that I continue to try to talk and if I uh, don't want to talk, if I just want to write or whatever the case may be, that it's okay. It's okay. And and so that's part of the reason why we're talking about this today. Um, well, actually, so, to be honest, uh, sis, you didn't ask me for my personal opinion. I was coming to you. But um, Go ahead. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, we're living in the flesh. So, you know, it takes time to grieve. Can't nobody tell you when to get over that. Amen. And it happened so suddenly. And to me, with you losing your mother, then your son, that was kind of back to back. So that's the reason why one day I wrote in a text message that God give his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. But what he don't know, we only can be so strong. Sometimes you got to call out on Jesus. And Lord, I need strength today. I can't deal with this, you know. So my point is, is that um, I had another uh, sister-in-law that told me, she said, they keep telling me to get over my son. It's going on two years and I still can't get over it. I said, can't nobody tell you when to get over that? You might not never. You carried that baby in your womb nine months or eight or whatever. You birthed that child. You watched that child. Well, her situation was totally different. Come out the penitentiary and become into a man. And for his own brother-in-law, to wait till he go to sleep and go blow his brains out. That don't make, I mean, everybody, they can't tell you when to get over there. It's not nothing, you know, that's even with, if, if, if it would happen to me, which I don't have any children, but I still love all of them like they're mine. So the point of it is sometime I often find myself thinking of Miss Kay Francis and how beautiful and sweet her soul was. Malcolm, how much he made me smile for no reason. I mean, he could just say anything and we'll be sitting there just grinning. So, you know, um, nobody knows our relationship, but I've been knowing him since he was 12. And I met him at your house with my brother. And um, I came in pretty early in life, um, 26 years to be in fact. And, and to make a long story short, you know, a lot of people like, well, Sean, I didn't know you love Malcolm that much. I love all of them. I mean, you know, I'm gonna be honest, if anything would happen, even to my mama foster kids, I might be on the floor crying harder than everybody else. But it don't mean that you're not grieving. And, you know, it, it takes time. So pretty much that's all I had to say is take your time. You know, sometimes we're moving too fast and we don't even realize it. And that's what I love about God is that he prepares us in his word, in the Bible of grieving. He says it's a time to laugh. It's a time to cry. So that's e- Ecclesiastics. I was reading that the other day. Mm-hmm. It's a time for us to live. It's a time for us to die. So he just said, be ready. He, we don't know. Amen. But anyway, I'm, I'm done with that. Amen. Amen. Brother Amen. Gary, did you have anything? No. I'm, <clears throat> everything you guys can say pretty near hit where I'm at, um, and it's all true. And if, if the thing that you said from Hebrews uh, 10 and 4, I believe, uh, we, he allows suffering 
that we might bear uh, 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 the suffering of others. We might be able to give them something. You know, you can tell me something when my mama died. You can come to me and say, let me tell you something. Come, you know, you went through that. God allowed these things for us to be able to minister to somebody else. That's all. When you get it, you give it away. Get it and give it away. Keep on going. The whole world needs the world. Amen. 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 So let's talk just a little bit about R, which is release. Uh, anything that lessens tension or offers a pleasing change, whether it's our relief, whether it's their relief, whether it's relief from pain and suffering, relief from uh, uh, any what we consider to be relief. So we're talking about God, then we're talking about relief. So I have some more scriptures. So I wrote these down in order. So y'all ain't got to jump around. So uh, I'm going to have Vanessa read John 16 and 22. Brother Gary, I'm going to have you read Philippians 14 and 13. Shanana, if you can get uh, Romans 8 and 18. And yes, we are jumping around. And uh, I don't think Brother Benoit can get a scripture, but I'll read the last, which is uh, Revelations 21 and 4. Are we going in order? Yes, we are going in order this time. Okay. Um, John 16 and 22 in our B version says, so he needs to know. Philippian what? 4 and 13. Okay, thank you. Um, John 16 and 22 NIV says, so with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. No one. We'll take, I love that. No one will take away your joy. Okay, go, go, Brother Gary. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Was that 13? Oh. What did you tell him? Four, Four and 13. Oh, 13. Okay, I thought 14. I was like, uh, that's it. <laughs> Not 13. It's a verse you know. I can do all things. It's a verse you know. Christ. <laughs> there you go. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Amen. 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 That'll work. That'll work. Uh, For I reckon that I. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah. You, you ready? Go. Okay. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Brother Benoit, can you read or you need me to read it? What am I supposed to be reading? 21, Revelations 21 and 4. Mm. Kelly read that scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God, wipe away all tears. Wow. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it then. Go ahead and read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I couldn't. <laughs> 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 well, <Run> over, Lord. <laughs> you, can wipe, you can wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, no crying, no pain anymore for the former things to pass away. Amen. 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 Relief. We're talking about relief. We know that, you know, it's not easy, but we can do this thing. We are not alone. And that's another thing God was trying to show me. I am not alone. I am not by myself. I have family. I have, uh, I don't have that many friends, but oh, it, that's okay. I got family. I <laughs> got family. <laughs> so there's somebody that is there with me that has gone through or that is going through or that is close enough to have an understanding. And so God just wanted to reveal that to me. So I didn't have a question on relief, but uh, let's look at immediate. Immediate is without delay. It is not separated by time or space. Suddenly, fast, without warning, immediate. Uh, so our scriptures are Mark 5 and 30. I'm going to have Brother Gary start us first this time. Mark 5 and 30. Uh -huh. Amen. And Shanetta, if you'll get Acts 2 and 2. And then Vanessa, if you can read Revelations 4 and 2. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. And Jesus immediately knowing 
in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my cloak? Amen. 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 And suddenly, go ahead. Oh, and suddenly there came a second from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Vanessa? Okay. Revelation 4, 2, and I be at once. I was in the spirit, and therefore before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I gonna talk about those things. But I say suddenly, in instantly, immediately. When Jesus was touched, the, when she touched the hem of God, it immediately came out and healed her body. And then uh, when we uh, see that God came in and acts, you know, for all those to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, suddenly, instantly, and even in Revelations, he said instantly he was uh, put in the spirit and so that he can see heaven and talk to us about it and tell us what was there. Suddenly, instantly. So sometimes things aren't immediate, but some things take a process. And so when things happen unexpectedly, uh, it's harder to deal with because we wasn't expecting it. If you knew, like say for instance, we know we got a light bill every month, right? So we expect that. We put that light bill uh, money back, hopefully. <laughs> and then, because we, we know that we're gonna have this. But when things happen unexpectedly, it's a little bit more harder to deal with. But I'm gonna tell you, and we all know this, God does not make mistakes. He is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. Uh, that's Numbers 23 and 19. So let's look at early. 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 Night or day. Early. By year or age. What we consider to be early. You know. And so, uh, Brother Vinoy, if you can read Psalms 5 and 3 for us. And then, Shanana, if you can get Mark 1 and 35. Talking about early. No, you're muted. No, he can hear. He just, he just hasn't muted. Maybe, maybe he can't read for us. Here he is. Okay. No, I'm touch it, so I mean, my touch it. Okay, mm -hmm. oh Lord, in the morning, you hear my voice, and in the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you. Amen. Janana? And in, the and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. We're talking about Jesus, then. We know that Jesus went out and prayed before he was, um, you know, <laughs> First, he was led up by the spirit, but <laughs> you know, ain't that something how we can be led by the spirit to do particular things? And so, uh, early it depends on what we consider to be early. If we on the night shift, early could be 4 p.m., you know, early in the morning. Uh, and so we just want to uh, just talk about that. And I don't have any questions on that one. The next one is, I know I should have got that, but I didn't. Um, the next one is F, the end of grief is feeling. Whether we're angry, whether we regret, whether we have pain or sorrow, whether we're being selfish or whether it's love. So, Gary, Brother Gary, I'm gonna start, you're going to start us out with Jeremiah 17 and 9. Vanessa? Uh, we, I want you to get Proverbs 14, 12 through 13. <laughs> And Shanetta, if you can get First John three and twenty. First John three and what? Okay, let me start over. Gary, Jeremiah seventeen nine, seventeen and nine. Vanessa, Proverbs fourteen, twelve verses twelve and thirteen. Shanetta, First John three and twenty. Amen. Amen. Go for it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? Okay, Vanessa. Or who was next? Supposed to be me. 
But Vanessa can go ahead. She like. I don't remember. Uh, it's you. Go, Vanessa. Okay. Um, Pro Proverbs 14, 12 through 13, NIV version says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Even in laughter, the heart may ache and rejoicing may end in grief. Amen. Shanana? You want me to do First John 3 and 13? 3 and 20. Oh, my bad. I'm going to get a little bit more for me with that one. <laughs> but the thing is, I just jump right into it. I've been doing it every day. Okay. Um, I'm waiting on to pull it up. Okay. There you go. For well, whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. That is the scripture I want to talk about. Whenever our heart or people condemn us, you tell them to ask God about it. Ain't mine. It's not me for me to worry about. So whenever we feel in some kind of way, just like what Shanana said, they were telling her, get over it. Your son is dead. Can't nobody tell you that. Can't nobody tell you when to grieve or stop grieving. None of that. Don't let them do it. Tell them. Take it up with God. Take it up with God. Don't get mad at them because they think they're doing a good thing. Take it up with God. God will release me when it's my time. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I want to kind of get on, get into repair real quick, but I want to first give you five stages of grief, which are the first stage is denial. Second stage is anger. The third stage is bargaining. The fourth stage is depression. And the fifth stage is acceptance. So repair. We're going to be using Ecclesiastes 3. And we're not even going to read it because you guys pretty much know what it is. Left, life, and death, time, and not, you know, y'all know this. Good. But when we repair, we want to make recommendations, you know, script, give them scriptures, help them in that kind of way, be available for them um, when they need it. And see, when the funeral happens, everybody's there. and But really, the process of healing doesn't really occur during that time because you're trying to get things done. Really, the process starts occurring after. You know, when you run across a shirt or when you run across something, a hat, or when you run across something that reminds you, that's when the healing process starts. And there's nobody around a lot of times during that time frame. God has equipped us. God has uh, is going to give us peace in this situation. God gives us that amazing release that can't you you won't even realize sometimes that God has released you from that thing that He has already done it for you, and then He gives us inspiration to continue and to share, and then He gives us recompense. So He rewards us for moving in His will. The time for grief, the reason why I believe God wanted me to bring up this grief and repair is because where he's getting ready to take us now, going forward, he doesn't want us to get sidetracked or stuck, and he doesn't want us to feel like we can't do what God is calling us to do to move forward because it's a process. It's all a process. It's going to take time. And each one of us are different in our time frame. And you don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to feel any kind of way except for, okay, I'm not there yet. It's simple. I'm not there yet. When I'm on my way to Dallas and I get stuck in traffic, I have to remind myself, don't, don't turn around. I'm just not there yet. Does that make sense? My brother will say, get off on the side road that we don't have no clue of knowing about. <laughs> and then we end up back on the road again and he be like, well, we follow down the line. God, we're about to get lost. Hush your mouth. Sit here and wait. <laughs> Be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with your family and friends. Be patient because it's a process. And one day, you may be talking to me and I may go zone out. And you be like, oh, what the heck happened? Guess what? Be patient. Because lately I've been zoning out. My husband's been like, you all right? I, I ain't even know. I'm dealing with so much. 
But guess what I do know? I know God. And I know God ain't going to leave me wrong. And as long as I continue to love God and show forth my strength in him, I'm going to be all right. Amen. I'm mm -hmm. going to send you guys a copy of some extra scriptures. I'm going to drop it in the uh, chat. Does anybody have any comments? I know this is a little bit tougher. I, in some cases, it didn't really seem as tough as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but uh, it's something that we need to talk about. We don't talk about this stuff in the church sometimes. I don't know why. But this, this is stuff like in our life. Any comments? Now, I just wanted to say that um, a lot of times people are so incompassionate until, maybe I'm not saying the correct word, until it happened to them. And what my great saying is, is that right now is me going through this, but tomorrow it could be you because your, your storm is brewing. Believe that. So what I've learned to do is to ignore a lot of things when people say the most ignorant things. And you like, God, I know that's not them. It must be the, the devil inside of them. And what I love about God is even when people never came up and gave me a hug or asked me, was I okay after the funerals or whatever, um, God never left, see? So he would give me that comfort that I needed in that time that I needed it in, even though a lot of people didn't know I'm still grieving. And I know they look at the fact, oh, well, Malcolm was just um, your sister-in-law's son. No, that's to you. You don't understand my relationship. And even though we didn't see each other every day, we didn't talk every day, but it don't stop my love. And so that's, you know, a lot of people, they got it messed up. And, and, and I just feel like that we're living in such a selfish, selfish, inconsiderate world that I'm learning to just actually look through people and asking the Holy Spirit to continue to give me spiritual discernment so I can deal with people on their own accord because everybody's not on every, you know, on my spiritual level. I'm going to just say that. Amen. Amen. I just want to warn everybody we got two minutes left just so that everybody knows. Anybody else have any other comments? Uh, I want to talk, I want to talk to you and, um, we know it after we get out the call. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. Oh! Let's go. Something bad. I don't know. Maybe she went to her. 